Hey doing everyone, we're back for another update. Here we're going to be going through the trades that we're making in the People Squad, the Head to Head Squad, and also my team. And what we'll see with the People Squad is actually no trades this week. So we came 861st, had a really, really good week there. And it, we just seemed to think that, uh, that no trades would be needed. We have Nanai and uh, Tango as well. So two guys that went really well last week, and I feel like they're the two must-haves coming into this week. Yeah, we both we have both of them, and we feel like the team elsewhere. There's no one that you know has really lost their role. No one injured or suspended that we uh, would need to move out, or is or is pricey enough that we could move out. When you look at the squad, we, we get Harry Grant to play his first game, so we should be uh, seeing a decent score from him. We've gone for Payne Haas as captain as well. Lolo should have a little bit more of a bounce back game, I'd say for him. Arrow probably expects somewhere around the 50 mark. Stefano probably around the 50 as well. A bounce back game from Brown would be nice. Curdy Man somewhere between 45 and 50. Tungo around that 40 mark would be nice. 35 to 40 we'll take for sure. You and Aiken, maybe some upside in the attacking stats, but anywhere around the 50 would be cool. Uh, Nico Hines up against the Eels. I'm expecting and hoping for somewhere around that 55 again. We have uh, Stephen Crichton with 57. We'll hope to hit, get a 35 or 40 with him as well. Any upside on that is great. And then Pat with the goal kicking somewhere over the 50 mark for him would be a good bounce back. On our interchange, we have a few guys to play around with here. So I could pop Bully Moore down in the, in the 7 jersey if we want. And we could try and loop a bunch of the guys. The only thing is, is Snyder plays later in the week. So it's hard to loop a guy when they play later because they they um, the other guys play first, for example. So I could put Bully in 6, uh, six and 7 with King. And the theory with that one is that if, you know, I've got uh, Valea and Schneider as well that could have in three and four, and then we could loop two guys back here, whether it's Walters, whether it's um, whether it's King Ilias, there's a bit to think about. But I just think with the double loop, it probably is a little bit too difficult to work out. So we go uh, Valea, who plays early in the week uh, on, the, uh, on the Saturday, I believe, at 3 p.m., so we'll, uh, we can work that out. But yeah, I'm probably going to play Bully because he plays the second one anyway. And then we can try and loop Ilias if he goes well. If he doesn't, we can just chop, pop King up there. A few people have been mentioning Walters might be playing in the starting side. I haven't seen anything on that. So we'll leave him down in eight. And if anything changes, we can we can play around with that. But that's the uh, that's the squad. There's no real point trying to trade out by Alea if you... Uh, if you don't have, you know, you don't have the excess funds available, you're not making two trades, and it's it's silly to trade him, here, trade him or Russell to someone, unless you're missing out on King, for example. And Snyder's only out for a week, so we're going to hold on steady with him. That is that. Um, also, just I just want to say a big thanks to all the guys that are um, appreciating me trying to pronounce a lot of the uh, Pacific Islander boys um, names. There, I, you know, giving it a good crack. I've got a couple of people who helped me out with that, and if there's any other guys that. I'm saying incorrectly for, for my uh, my Kiwi boys that are, that are watching. I do have a, a big audience of all you guys, so I appreciate that. But um, just send me a message if I if there's another guy or two that I'm struggling to pronounce at the moment. I'm trying to learn uh, Nanai as well. Uh, so, yeah, let me know if I need any improvements, but I appreciate all that so far. Also, guys, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. I think half my audience hasn't subscribed. Get around it. We, uh, we talk some good footy in here. And a lot of the uh, people that are following on from my tips and following along are doing really well. So get around that. Cool. So the head-to-head -head squad had a really good start. Again, the overall rank doesn't matter too much. But usually if you're scoring well, your player is going to be making some cash and, and doing really well and winning the head-to-head -head comps. I did win all of my head-to-heads uh, this first round. And we'll see if we can do it again. Even when we had a bunch of players that didn't do too well. So I'm actually looking to hold trades in the head-to-head -head squad as well. The only one... The only player that I'm going to be missing out on is Nanai, and yeah, it's just a hard one. I really want him in the squad, but if, you, if we actually look through here, and if I'm going to be telling people to hold trades on certain people, then I should be doing it in my teams as well. So yeah, Cook is, as Vice said, yeah, a decent score, but hopefully something over 60 for him. We want Crichton Im improving on that 47, and I think he will. Again, we spoke about Curdy. Uh, Bully, I wouldn't expect a 48 again, maybe somewhere between 35 and 45. Uh, Tualangi, so with him, he, I think against a slightly easier side, they play up, who they play? They play in the last game against the Knights, so I think he can play some big minutes and maybe get some attacking stats this week. Ben Hunt will improve, Burton should improve, 
Expect bounce backs from those guys. Bird, I think around the 50 mark is perfect. Tungo, again, 35 to 45. We spoke about the other guys. On our bench, I suppose you, I could move um, uh, Nene off to... Uh, sorry, I can move Hetherington off to, off to Nene pretty easily, right? I got 30k in the bank. That allows me 406 to play with. Um, and Jeremiah is in that 383, I believe. So I could do that, but you know, there's a reason I brought him in last week, you know, pretty late, obviously to try and get that loop for for Tango. But yeah, that you know, we don't obviously on the bench isn't ideal, but he's he's cheap enough that I think that he could still score at least his break even or slightly above. And then if he gets a starting jersey and he gets 45 to 55 minutes, then I believe he's going to make cash. So I think that's a silly silly reason to trade him out. You know, if just it just say even even if Nanay goes out and gets a another 50, he will make sort of 40 to 50K, right? But that leaves him up around that 420 mark. And, and if he's going to be someone that averages 45, then that's still not too late to jump on him. And the way that this game works, there's a lot of suspensions and injuries that happen. COVID, obviously, there's a few different things. So we could easily pick him up next week. And you watch, you know, probably two to three of the guys in my squad get injured or suspended next week. So... That's something to think about, and and you could easily switch a mid range or a gun if they get injured for multiple weeks. They do an ACL or something like that. God forbid they don't. But if that happens, we could bring him in next week anyway. So we're not going to miss out on too much. And I just feel like it'll be wasting trades this week to to trade out any of these guys. You know, with Russell, we had the extra thirty k. We can't. We unfortunately can't go to someone like Josh King. What we don't have is some wing fullback cover as well. So again. Maybe saving some trades that if something happens, you know, COVID or something over the weekend, that I could uh, quickly bring in a cheaper wing fullback or something like that. Um, that's something to think about as well. But yeah, I just feel like making no trades in this team is a decent idea this week with, you know, how the team's set up. And I think we, we should be able to do pretty well again. We've got Ilias that could we could use as a, uh, we could have him in for a uh, loop. We could use Russell as well if we wanted to try and loop Walters. So that's, that's our options in that squad, guys. And moving on to my team, we finally yeah, have a team that made some trades. And my team obviously doing the worst out of the bunch. But I, the biggest thing here was just missing out on Tongo, Tongo and uh, and the Nay. With that in mind, I decided to bring both of them in. And the only way I could do that, unfortunately, was to move on from Stefano Utukamanu. So with that one there, it's more about, you know, I want to keep him, right? He's a mid-range guy that I think has the potential to become a gun, but it is based on potential right now. We're basing it off that six to eight you know, game span at the back end of last year. The minutes that he got in that first game, I'm really happy with. I, a lot of people weren't, but I like the 51 minutes that he got. If he can stick anywhere between 50 and 55 minutes, I think he'll be able to average close to that 50 mark, which is what we projected him to do. My issue with him there is that I can I can save 100, you know, bank 190, 180K there with him to pick up Tango and pick up Nanae whilst trading out Leo Thompson as well as who I moved on from. And yeah, that 220, he wasn't going to make too much money unless there was a bunch of injuries, right? He's going to play a fair bit. Of, a fair, he'll play a fair amount this year and he probably has an opportunity at some point to make money, but that's not going to be now. And what that does for me is bring in two guys that I feel are, are very much must have players or close to it, right? You obviously, you know, head to head, I've decided not to pick up Jeremiah, but um, yeah, I think they're both really, really important players. And Stefano, we're not exactly sure if he's going to take that leap to the next level. Look, if he does take that leap, I'm going to have to cop that loss for sure. I just want to be uh, aware, you know, make this aware for you guys that getting, if you haven't got both of the, these guys, then, then moving a mid-ranger and a, a cheap guy that's injured, whether it be Russell, Tom, you know, Thompson, not going to make too much cash. If you are going to go Ilias, for example, just you know, just be aware that he could start doing well and make you cash. Stefano could score fifty every week, and you're like, oh, that's a pain. You know, when when Nai could get forty, uh, could average forty. Tango could average thirty eight or thirty five over the year. You know, there's a few question marks there, but I just felt the the cash that I could make from those two guys, and the the points that they could score. You know, I'm not expecting fifty six and sixty one. I'm expecting a forty three and a thirty eight. Let's say from from them respectively. Um, they're gonna, you know, they can cover two positions that are pretty important. Uh, Tango has the the dual position as well, and I get the the ball rolling with making cash. So that's that's the theory with that one, guys. In terms of my squad, 
We've got uh, we've got Reed up top with 36. I'm expecting a bounce back from him, and obviously Dylan Brown at 31 there. We spoke about Arrow uh, and Aiken and the Nye as well, and we spoke about all the other guys. And in terms of the bench, I've decided that I'm going to I'm actually going to loot Berry. That's my theory in this game. So he's going to they play the, the Saturday 3 p.m. game, I believe. And if yeah, we with Snyder playing later in the round. If Barry goes well, I can move Snyder into the four jersey, uh, four interchange slots. Um, I think Barry, with that base, if he gets any kind of attacking stats, he can get anywhere from 40, 45 or 55, I'd say. And if he goes nuts and has a big game against the Titans, then then even better for him. I'm not exactly sure how they're going to go, but I can see some points either for either side, and maybe he's the beneficiary of that. I think he has a little bit more upside than Lockie does against the Storm, for example. So I'm going to go with that one, and if, if Lockie comes out and kills it, then... At worst, I've got uh, someone that's going to be making a little bit of cash there. So that's the theory with having Rocco in that loot position. Again, guys, Schneider would go into four, yeah, and I can I can pick one of these guys. If I don't, if I think Maxi King's going to score better than Panasini, for example, I can move him out, um, or I can move one of my starters out of the side also. But yeah, so Penn, I'm expecting a better game from him. Remember, that's all in base stats. The same with Ber Rocco Berry, right? We've got a 32 for him and a 28 for Rocco. Both of them were full of base stats. Which is great because all they need is now is one try or one try assist, so a couple of offloads, a couple of tackle breaks, and they move up into close to that 40 range. So that's what you'd be looking at and looking for with guys like that. Randall's going to do great again, I'd imagine. Maybe not 59, but 45 plus. Uh, Tuolangi, I think, has some upside as well. Maxi King, I wouldn't be expecting the 39 minutes that he got, but anywhere around that 30 to 35 minutes, I can expect a score of about 35 to 40 at a, at a nice P PPM of around one or just above you know, with some upside there on, on the amount of tackles that he makes or maybe some offloads or uh, tackle breaks. So that's the theory there. Uh, let me know what you guys think on those two trades for the week, if that makes sense to you. Obviously, yeah, I'm, I'm well, in a nutshell, I'd say Stefano's a hold, but in my situation, I think I'm going to get a little bit more benefit out of it. And we're okay to use a couple of trades early. Because if you look at the squad now, I have cover in the wing fullback. I have cover in the centers, mid, edge, and hooking position. Also with the halves, obviously, with Schneider coming back. And uh, we've got Ilias there as well. And I've got Nico Hines who can move up if I needed to, move Rocco into the starting side. So I'm really happy with my coverage. And if I do have an injury or two, to some of the cheaper guys especially, or if it's a one or two week injury, I have the, I have cover across that. So that's something for you to think about as well. Yes, maybe this week or two you can you can go without the cover. But remember what can happen if, if an injury or a suspension, oh, sorry, if an injury or COVID happens during the round, for example, and your player hasn't played, you're then gonna have to move them off. And if you don't have the cover, then you're gonna be playing with 16 in that week, which is very frustrating. So that's where the cover is important and also stops you from forcing yourself to make trades week to week. So there you go, guys. That's the update on the three squads. I hope that helped you guys out with all your trades for the week. If you have any further questions, what I'm going to be doing is live streaming tonight on uh, on, on the YouTube channel for half an hour from 7.15. So if you can tune into that, I'll answer all your questions. I'm probably going to do a bit of like a, a quick buy, hold, sell, um, avoid, and you know, your watch list, guys. I'll just probably go through all the team lists and, and just say yes, no, maybe on all of them. Um, see if that helps you out in your last, last minute decisions. But I hope you really enjoyed that, guys, and we'll catch you in the next video. See you later.